The first reading is taken from uh, Jeremiah 1, verses 1 to 10. The call of Jeremiah. The words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, one of the priests at Anathoth, in the territory of Benjamin. The word of the Lord came to him in the thirteenth year of the reign of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah, and through the reign of Jehoiakim, son of Josiah, king of Judah, down to the fifth month of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah, when the people of Jerusalem went into exile. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Ah, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a child. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Now, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over the nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Here ends the reading. May God bless this to our hearts and minds. The second reading is taken from a psalm of David, psalm number 139. O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all of my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in, behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me. Even the darkness will be not be dark to you. The night will, be, will shine like the day, for darkness is as light to you. For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in your mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them became, came to be. Here ended this reading. The Gospel reading is taken from Luke chapter 4 and reading from verses 21 to 30, verse 20 to 30. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he said to them, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Is this Joseph's son? they asked. Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself. Do ye in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum? I tell you the truth, he continued, No prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time, when the sky was shut for three and a half years, and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha, the prophet. Yet not one of them was cleansed except Naaman, the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of the town, and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built, in order to throw him down the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. May God add his blessing to his word this morning. 
going to preach mostly this morning again, like I did last week, from the Old Testament, but make some references to the psalm that was read as well this morning. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, said God to Jeremiah. So I want to begin by saying God knows you. We were all created by God. God knows everything there is to know about you. I think it's one of the most amazing thoughts that the God of this universe that created everything and put everything in its perfect place knows absolutely everything about you. The psalmist says God formed us in the wombs of our mothers, but before he did that, he knew us. I want to reread some verses to you to just drive that point home. For you created my inmost being, You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in that secret place. When I was woven together in the depths of the earth, your eyes saw my unformed body. Long before you were conceived by your parents, you were conceived in the mind of God. God thought of you first. It's not fate, it's not chance, it's not luck, it's not coincidence that you are alive at this moment and breathing. God wanted to create you. God did not just know Jeremiah, as Jeremiah tells us in the word, but he knew each and every single one of us before we took our very first breath. So we cannot argue this morning with scripture, which so clearly says that God knitted us, formed us, put us together in the wombs of our mothers, saw our unformed bodies. We cannot argue the fact that God knew us before we were born. He was with us in the womb. With us in the womb, and what is more, verse 16 says, all the days of my life were ordained for me. So not just from those beginning stages, but right into the future. God knows everything, all written in God's book before one of those days came to be. It's an incredible thought. The psalm reminds us beautifully this morning that God pays such careful attention to our lives from conception through those fetal stages into childhood and beyond. Every single day of our lives that we are alive, He knows and how precious we are to God. This means he knows everything that is going on in your life right now. This means you have not been forgotten. That he knows every trial you are facing, every struggle you are going through, all the temptations you come up against. Even Matthew says the number of hairs on your head. He knows them all. Can you put that first slide up for me of the river? That's the great Mississippi River. You can move on to the next slide. A young boy came upon an old man who was fishing in that great, alongside that great Mississippi River. And immediately the boy started talking to the old man. And suddenly their conversation was interrupted by this, this um, river queen coming down the river. The sight of the ship caused the young boy and the old man to stand in awe. Then the boy yelled out, Let me ride, let me ride. The old man turned to the boy and tried to calm him down, explaining that this boat was too important a ship to stop and give little boys standing alongside the river a ride. But the boy kept yelling, let me ride, let me ride. The old man was stunned as this great ship pulled up and the gangplank was lowered. And in a flash, the little boy ran onto the deck. And the old man continued to stare after the ship looking for the boy as it pulled off again along the river. A few minutes later, the little boy appeared above one of the rails on the ship. And the boy yelled out, Mister, I knew this boat would stop for me. The captain knows me. He's my father. You see, God created you. God knows you. He never forgets his children. In the womb of your mother, All the days ordained for you, he knows you. So if there's anyone seated you this morning with a serious doubt about whether God is with you, particularly maybe as your circumstances cause you to wonder if God has forgotten you, 
And the words from Psalm 139 and the call of Jeremiah emphasizes again that God doesn't forget his people and he's intimately involved in our lives. Secondly, staying in Jeremiah verse 5, before you were born, I set you apart. There's a fly here that just won't leave me this morning. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Before you were born, before you were born, God says, I set you apart. I guess that, that verse raises for me anyway the questions then of what is the purpose of my life? One more story. A little boy came home from church looking visibly upset. His mother asked what was wrong. He says, we learned a stupid song in Sunday school today. What was the song? The mother asked. It says, Jesus wants us to be his sunbeam. Do you remember that song? Yeah. What's stupid about that, said his mother. Because the little boy fumed and said, I don't want to be a sunbeam. I want to be a fireman. God has a purpose for our lives. Maybe we all need to hear this message again, that God has a purpose and a plan for our lives. Jeremiah 29 and verse 11, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and plans to give you a future. That was the word of God through Jeremiah to a people who were exiled in Babylon for 70 years. They needed something to hold on to. That God still had a plan and still had a purpose for their lives because it was tough out there. So we all ask this question in our lives. What is the purpose of my life? How do I find the purpose of my life? For my life? As I struggled with this, I thought, well, I suppose you start with the obvious. You start to say, well, God, give me wisdom and give me some direction. That's what James says in James chapter 1 and verse 5. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives generously to all without reproach and it will be given to him. And so it's up to all of us to discover why we're here, why God put us here. Some people seem to have very clear, very specific tasks, calling, purpose in life. But we all have a mission to fulfill. And that is to love, to obey, and to serve God. To love, to obey, and to serve God. So that's the first purpose of your life. God wants you to know Him. He wants you to know Him. And He wants you to love Him. I'd like to think that everything else is secondary to that. Whatever you do, whatever you become, everything else is secondary to that. Paul said to the church in Ephesus, long before he laid down the earth's foundation, God had us in mind. And he settled on us as the, fo as the focus of his love to be made whole and holy by his love. So he had us in mind, as the psalm says, as Ephesians says, as Jeremiah says. But he settled on us as the focus of his love. We are the focus of his love. God made you, in other words, to love you. And we are here to be loved by God, to experience the love of our Creator, first and foremost. And there's another word for expressing love to God, and it's called worship. Worship is expressing your, your love to God. Worship is living a life that is pleasing and holy unto God. And when we talk about the word worship, most of you think of music. But it's more than just music. It's everything you do and everything you say that brings pleasure to God. Your whole life is an act of worship. So you, you are here to be loved by God and to love Him back. Second purpose God created you is that He created you for service. He made you to serve Him. You plan for God's pleasure to be loved by Him. That's worship. Then you were created that you could serve Him and that we call ministry. We all created to serve, every single one of us, created for ministry, created for service, all gifted in some way. You can't be and become like Jesus Christ if without serving someone else. So what is ministry? Ministry is any time you use your abilities God has given you to help someone else, whatever that means for you, in whatever way. The Bible teaches us that God uniquely wired each one of us, yes, for a certain way, for a purpose, gave us abilities. You can read about that in Corinthians. Not for your benefit, but that you would be a blessing to other people. So we are yet to love God. We are yet to serve God. And we are yet to obey God. 
or to trust Him. That's another word. To trust Him, to listen to Him, to trust Him, to submit, to surrender to His word. Scripture is clear that we don't only listen to Him, but we do what we are told. And when we do what we are told, James says, there is freedom that comes in our lives, and then we are, we are a blessing to others. That's what follows obedience, that's what follows trust. So, God created you, God formed you, we've established that. God's given you a reason and a purpose that you are here. We know that. But somehow and sometimes we still have doubts and we still have fears. We're all human. We fear. Sometimes God calls us to do something or say something. It requires a step of faith. To step beyond what we cannot see. That's not, the, that's not easy. God said to Jeremiah, even though he established that he called him, that he formed him in the womb of his mother. He then said to Jeremiah, don't be afraid of them for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. So God promises us his presence. He promises us his presence. I've formed you. You've got a purpose. If you're having any wobblies and doubts about that, let me remind you, says God of this. I promise you my presence. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. Do not be afraid. He says, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. Sometimes when we step out in faith, we don't know where the end is. We don't know where we're going. We don't know what the results will be regarding some of the decisions that we take. But God promises us His presence. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. From birth I have relied on you, says the psalmist. You brought me forth from my mother's womb. Not only does God promise to be with us tomorrow, all the days ordained for us, He's been with us in our yesterdays, in our past, right back to the womb of our mothers. He has been present with us every moment and will be every moment in our lives. The psalmist says, where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? I cannot escape the presence of God. If I go to the heavens, says the psalmist, if I go to the very depths of the earth, if I go to the far side of the ocean, everywhere, every single place is accessible to God. He says, I cannot escape your presence. He's with us always. And this is good news. This is good news. When you need Him, He's already there. Because no matter what you do, no matter where you go, no matter what you say, you can never, ever be away from the comforting presence of God. He is with you. Secondly, when we are afraid, we doubt God. He promises to rescue us. God said to Jeremiah in chapter 1, Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. We have fears. Sometimes we fear. When we get into a particular situation God has called us to, maybe we can't fix the problems that are there. Maybe we don't know how to solve them. Maybe we don't know what to do. Maybe the situation is too much for us. It was far too much for Jeremiah. In fact, he became known as the weeping prophet because it was so tough. So tough what God had called him to do. But God promises, like he did to Jeremiah, he promises he will rescue us. God promised to, to rescue Jeremiah from trouble. Not to keep trouble from coming to Jeremiah because it came in leaps and bounds to Jeremiah. So much so that he became depressed. It kept coming to Jeremiah. God doesn't say he'll keep you from, from trouble. God didn't insulate Jeremiah from jailings or insults or hardship. God doesn't keep us from encountering life's storms. But he says, I will see you through. He says, I will be with you by my presence. He says, I will rescue you. I will walk with you. Thirdly, we fear sometimes when we don't know what to say. But God promises us words. Jeremiah came up with all sorts of excuses as to why he couldn't be a prophet for God. He says, I don't know how to speak, God. I'm only a child. He was a young man, probably in his 20s. But the Lord says to Jeremiah, it doesn't matter, Jeremiah. Don't say that, you, that you're only a child. Just say to people, I have, the Lord has sent you. 
And then do whatever God has commanded you to do, Jeremiah. And then the Lord reached out his hand to Jeremiah and touched his mouth and said, I have put my words in your mouth. God promises to help us what to say, whether it's in a job interview, whether it's in a marriage, whether it's in a difficult situation. He says, I will put my words into your mouth. And lastly, even though we know we were created by God and formed by God, we have a purpose to live our lives under God. When we doubt, sometimes we don't think we're strong enough. We don't think we're strong enough, but God promises us His power. That's what He promised this, this weak Jeremiah and this doubting Jeremiah. God promised Jeremiah the power to tear down, the power to destroy, the power to uproot, the power to plant. And the fact is, we're not strong enough. We're not strong enough. Sometimes God calls us to do things beyond and above ourselves. Sometimes God requires us to make difficult decisions and to take on difficult challenges. And we're not strong enough. But we know in our hearts and minds that God's formed us, God's called us, we to love and obey and to serve God. But we don't feel strong enough. So be reminded again this morning. God is strong enough. God is strong enough to handle whatever situation you're facing. And God is big enough to bring you through. That's why we read the gospel this morning in Luke chapter 4. It reminded us that Jesus faced many challenges in his ministry. He wasn't even welcome in his hometown. He had to, do, he had to endure re rejection and hardship and threat. And in our work, walk with Jesus, we will have to stand up and face many challenges. But God is with you by his presence. God is with you to rescue you. God is with you to give you the right words. God is with you to empower you. He's called you to love Him, to obey Him and to serve Him. And He created you and gave you the number of days long before you were even a thought in your parents' minds. Amen. Let us pray. We thank You for the reminder again this morning, Lord. That we are not an accident. We are not a mistake. You've always had us in mind. We've been fearfully and wonderfully made. And our Father never forgets us. You've ordained to us the number of days on, of our lives. And would you help us to live the number of days you've given us right? And in relationship with you. Would you help us to live those days that you have given us in loving service and obedience to you. Thank you that your presence is with us always. Always. That you're strong enough to rescue us. Big enough to fight for us. And so as we come to your table this morning, make your presence real to us, Lord. As we break bread and take wine, remind us again that you poured out your very life out of deep and sacrificial love for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Your tithes and offerings will be received.